Hey guys, and welcome to the first in the new series for the May 2023 database exam. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how we normalize the data, create the tables, create the relationships, and make sure that we do all of the validation rules. Once we get our data set, we need to work out what tables we're likely to have. The first key indicator to this will be looking for IDs inside of our data set. So as you can see from here, we have the caravan ID, the model ID, and the manufacturer ID. Once we've done that, we can then start to look at all of the other fields that we're likely to need. But it's a good idea to look at the logical element of the fields that are left over and see whether they fit underneath the IDs that we've got. So we can see that the manufacturer name is actually a good fit inside of the manufacturer table. Then we move on to the model table, where we can see we have model name, sleeps, bedrooms, and double glazing as fields that would fit naturally underneath this. Then we have our caravan table where the caravan year built would probably fit quite nicely. This leaves us with three field areas which we don't know where they might go. So this could be something where we need to create a full table. And these are sales date, advertised sale price, and actual sale price. We're now gonna look at how we can create the relationships between the tables because at the moment these tables are sitting independently from each other. So we need to create some link via use of a foreign key to establish the communication between the tables. So the first area that we're gonna look at is where we can move the manufacturer ID into the model table. This will allow us to identify what the manufacturer, or who the manufacturer was that created that model. We're gonna now move the model ID into the caravan table as certain caravans can be of a specific model type. And also it is worth noting that the same model can be built at multiple points throughout a year or over a decade. And finally, we're going to move our three field areas that we weren't too sure what table they might fit into over. And then we're gonna pull into that area, the caravan ID. Now this is gonna deal with the sales. What we're doing here is we're combining the caravan ID as a foreign key in this instance, but combining it with the sales date to create what's known as a composite primary key. It's worth thinking that a caravan can be sold multiple times during its lifetime. However, it is impossible to sell the same caravan at the same time. Even if it was to be sold again straight away, there'd be a slight delay in its time. So therefore the timestamp would be seconds later and not identical. So because of this, we can use the time, date and the caravan ID together to create what's known as a composite primary key. I'm just going to reorganize the fields in our tables that we've got now, just so that we can see how their relationships are created between the tables. Obviously, we've got our composite primary key, our foreign keys and our primary keys, but we need to make sure that we're establishing the link between them. So as you can see here, we've got a number of lines going between the table areas. We've got our caravan ID and our caravan table linking to the sales table where we've got our foreign key of caravan ID. This creates our one-to-many relationship between the caravan table, so one caravan can appear many times in a sales table. Then we can see the link between our model table and our caravan table where the model ID is a foreign key in the caravan table. So many models can appear many times in the caravan table because we can have caravans that are the same model. And then we have our manufacturer ID that appears in our model table because many models can be built by the same manufacturer. So now we've created our relationships on paper, we can now start to move on to the creation of our database. So once we've clicked on create our blank database, the first view it will be given is a data sheet view for a table that we've not created yet. Don't worry about this when you first start off on your exam, because this just means that you have a table already. However, the table has not been customized to have the fields that we need inside of our database. So what we need to do is click on the design sheet view. This is normally located in the top left hand side of our screen under the table fields and we're going to go into the design view option. Normally you'll see a triangle and a ruler denoting the data sheet view. Then we moved on to the save as dialog box where we have to save this table before we can even go into the data sheet view. 
Now the first table that I'm going to be playing around with is going to be the table manufacturers. Now as you work through and create your tables you have to follow a naming convention that's important to be included within your naming. So for any table that you're likely to create you're going to need to put the prefix of TBL inside of your naming convention. Then I normally use an underscore and then I'll put the name of the table. So our first table that we're going to look at is manufacturers. So man Once you click on OK, you're taken straight into the design sheet view. You'll see where you have a field already called ID. This is automatically created whenever you create a new table using the Create Table option. If you use Create Design of a table, you won't find that the ID is automatically added. So just be very aware of that. Now, never ever leave it just as a default ID. Make sure that you're using the naming conventions or the field names that have been provided to you in your exam. So as we've done our normalization process already, the ID that we need to have inside of our manufacturers table is manufacturer ID. So I'm just going to put manufacturer We're going to choose the data type of auto number in this instance. And then we're going to move down to our next field. For those of you that are new to databases, what we're doing here is essentially we're creating in these rows what is going to be the headings in our tables when we create them. So anything we put along here is going to eventually be the top part of a table. And you'll see how that works in just a second. So the next table name that we're going to do or field name we're going to be putting in is manufacturer name. The data type that we're going to choose for this option is going to be short text. Now it's a good rule of thumb to never leave the field size as a standard default of 255 characters. It's always looked at as an area where you've overlooked it if you leave it as its default. So go in and change it. Change it by deleting one of the fives if you feel that 25 characters is long enough or even change it to 250. As long as you change the value on this, that will show the examiner that you've actually taken some consideration towards the field size. So I'm just going to make this 25 in this instance. Once I've done that, I'm just going to jump into design view by clicking on the view option and go into the data sheet view. And it's going to prompt me to make sure that I save the table again. So I'm just going to click on yes to save. Notice, as I said earlier on, what we're doing is we're creating the headings that are going to go inside our table. So then when we start to input our field information or the data, we know what heading we're putting the data underneath. So now that we've created the table for manufacturers, that we're going to move on to the next table that we need to create inside of our database. So we now click on the top option for create in our ribbon, and this will change the ribbon to have a number of different options for us we want to create a new table. Now, as I said earlier on, if I click on table, that takes me into an area where I will see that an ID has been automatically provided for me. However, if I was to go click on and choose design table, notice that that ID is not there for me. So please be careful when you go and create your new tables for your database, that if you do choose to jump into the create option and then jump into table, it puts you straight into the data sheet view with a defined ID already. Or if you choose to go into the table design option, it puts you into the design view and there is no ID automatically provided. Now, if you are in the table view where you've got the data sheet in there and you can see the ID, all you need to do to get into the design view of this table is quite simply go up to the home option and you'll see that you have your views for the design sheet view and the data sheet view. So if I'm choosing the design view, it would ask me to prompt to save the table again. So this is going to be a table that I'm going to be putting on for caravans. So I'm going to give it the prefix of TBL again, underscore caravan and press OK. And now I'm back into my 
design sheet view. Now in this table for caravans, I'm gonna to need to put the fields that we've already highlighted like we did before inside of our normalized data area. So in this one, I'm going to be doing caravan ID. And I'm gonna to choose to keep that as auto number. I'm going to choose the year built as my next field. And when we move over to the data type for this one, we're gonna to need to make sure that we choose an appropriate data type for the data that's going to be going in there. Now, as this is a year built, you will need to make sure that you're choosing either date time or date time extended. Now, most of the time in the exams that we've seen so far, you'll only ever need to use date time, not date time extended. Now that we've chosen that, you may notice that the field options, the field properties down the bottom have changed as well. We've got a few more options or a few less options than we had before. We don't have the option there for the 255 characters. However, we do have an option for format. If you click on that, you'll notice that on the very end of the actual row itself, you'll have a little drop down option. If you choose that, you can see that we have a number of different options available to us when it comes to what and how we display our date. So what we're gonna to need to choose in this one is we're going to use the short date option where we have a day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. Now that, that prefix of day, day, month, month, year, 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 year is something that you'll find that if you look outside of access databases, when you define a date, you may find that the uh, date structure is in month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. That's because it's set to an American prefix. So just be very cautious inside and outside of access when you start to play around with dates and dates structures. So now I've chosen an appropriate date, which is short date for my example here. I'm gonna add my final key and it's a foreign key. And that's going to include the information about the model ID. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna type in model ID. Now, as this is a foreign key, which is a primary key taken from another table, we know that the primary keys in most instances are numbers and they're generated automatically using the auto number data type. So what we're going to need to do is have a data type that's appropriate for model ID so that it's speaking the same language as if you wish as the primary key in the other table. Now we need to move our options to be to number in this instance because although the auto number is the selected data type in the other table, we don't and cannot have two auto numbers in the same table. So we can see here we've already got caravan ID as an auto number. But remember, a foreign key can be repeated because a foreign key is showing that an example of uh, the model, it could be model number one, which is of a specific brand. Now, multiple caravans can be of a specific brand. So therefore, its model number will be the same. So we are able to repeat text here. So an auto number would also not be appropriate because an auto number will change and go up sequentially. So I'm gonna choose a number option here for our model ID. Now that's enough for this table. So I'm gonna click on the option for save at the top here. Or if you do do something, you can click on the close button or if you right click on it, you can choose the option for save as well. So I'm just gonna save that. I will leave this one open for this example. Now I'm gonna move into the other table that I created when I was showing you how to set out your tables, being cautious of whether the primary keys are automatically added for us. And this is the one where we don't have an ID added for us. So we're gonna to need to make sure that we add that. Now, what we want to do is we're gonna create a table for sales. So we need to add what's known as a composite primary key. A composite primary key is a combination of two fields that together, when combined, can create a unique identifier. For example, in our scenario here for our caravans, caravans can be sold and they can be sold at different times, but no one caravan can be sold twice at the same time. So that's where we can combine these keys of sale date 
and caravan ID to make a unique identifier. So I'm going to type in caravan underscore ID. I'm going to choose that to be number because remember this is a foreign key but we're going to be combining it with another key to make a primary key and then the sale date. And that's going to be a date time. Now what you'll find is when you try and create a key that covers two fields, if you click one and then go down and then try and click it again to do the other one, the key will move around. So what you need to do here is either select by clicking and dragging down or clicking on one and then holding down control and clicking on the other. Now when I choose the primary key option, notice we have two keys attached to each of those fields. So those two keys together combined will provide us with our composite primary key. One other piece or a couple of other pieces of information that we need to include inside of this table is the advertised sale price. And this is going to be in currency as a data type. And then we've got our actual sale price. And that's also going to be currency. I'm just going to change that spelling mistake there. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to do the option for right clicking and I'm going to click on save. And remember, we need to make sure that we're using the right prefix. So I'm going to put TBL underscore sales and click OK. And then notice my tab has now changed to be the appropriate naming. Now, finally, we're going to create our final table as per our normalization that we did earlier on. And to do that, again, we're just going to go up to create and we're going to choose the table design. Notice it's not telling me to save it or anything like that. So just be careful when you do close, you should get a prompt to say, make sure you save this table and then you choose the right table naming conventions. So this table is going to be all about the table models. Okay. So we're going to go in here and we're going to put model ID and we're going to choose auto number for this one. We're then going to choose and put in the model name. And this is going to be short text. Again, just to make sure that I'm changing any default here, I'm just gonna change that to be 25. The next option is that we want to choose the number of sleeps. So we can put in there sleeps. This is going to be numerical. Don't worry, we will be coming back to these uh, these field properties in a little while, just to make sure that we set some parameters. Um, as we know that inside of our assignment and exam brief, we've told that certain things have to have certain restrictions in them. So we'll come back and do those in a second. We're gonna need to make sure that we have the number of bedrooms. And again, that's gonna be number. And then we're going to have an option for double glazing with a question mark. Now, because this is asking us for double glazing, we'll see that there is that question mark, which is prompting us to say it's a question. Um, so is there double glazing? Well, that tells me that the data type needs to be either a yes or a no. We might see it as one or zero inside of the data sets, but it means it's a binary question. It's either true or false. So we're just going to choose the yes, no data type there. And then we're going to put our foreign key in for our manufacturer, because like we said earlier on, certain caravans can be made by a certain manufacturers. So therefore the manufacturer ID might be here appear a number of times because a number of caravans can be built by a specific single manufacturer. So I'm going to put their ID in here as well.
Now, as I mentioned earlier on, because this is a foreign key, we're going to need to make sure that we're choosing the appropriate data type. So there's going to be number. And then we're going to just save the table. And we're going to call it TBL models. Click on OK. And notice here there is an example of what happens if you do not provide a primary key. This is just a little prompt from Access to say that we've created a table and we've not attached a primary key identifier to one of the fields. Now this is the tripping hazard if you do the create table uh, option because it chucks you straight into a table and there is no ID attached. So what we need to do is go up to and choose cancel. We're going to choose the model ID and then we're just going to click on the option for primary key. Now if you want to you can do it that way or if you click on the field right click and then you can choose the option for primary key there as well. So now that I've done that, and now if I right click and save, thankfully the save as option has remembered the TBO underscore models prefix that I'd already put. We're going to click on OK, and now we have our four tables. Now these four tables are independent of each other. There is no data in them. There are no relationships established yet between them. And that's something that we're going to do in one of the next steps. But first of all, we need to go back and revisit the tables to just to make sure that we've got the appropriate formats, field sizes, and any validation rules or input masks that need to be applied to each of these tables, as well as things like presence checks and persistence checks and any ranges of data in terms of things like sleeps or bedrooms. So we're going to go back into the tables and we're going to look at those. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back and have a look at the data type that we've chosen inside of the manufacturer table. As we can see here, I've automatically selected auto number, but this needs to be changed to short text. This is so that we can add the data set in that is three letters long. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change the field size to be three uh, letters long because in the data set obviously we have got the manufacturer IDs of being three letters long and we're also going to put an input mask in for this one so that we can make sure that any of the letters that are entered are automatically capitalized so in order for us to do this we just put in the greater than symbol and then three capital letter L's and that should allow us to force the database table itself to automatically make any of the letters that we type in uppercase so I'm just going to check that I've got the right field size for our manufacturer name. Just we don't want to leave things as default. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to change it from 255 characters to 25 characters long. And what we are going to do is just make sure that there cannot be a null value entered into this table. So what this essentially means is that you don't allow a user to allow them to put in a manufacturer ID without adding the manufacturer name into the table as well. So we put is not null as our validation rule, but when we create any validation rule into a table, we need to make sure that we include the validation text as well. So we need to give a nice little message to say, please enter a manufacturer name, and this will allow the users, if they were to accidentally forget to put the manufacturer's name in, a prompt will show up to them if they exit or enter the table without putting the name in. So I'm just going to save the table now and then I'm going to move on to the next table just to make sure that everything is right in that and that's going to be the models table. So as you can see here I have got the model ID in but we did say that we were going to come back to the number of bedrooms and use and set a validation rule in for this one um, because we do know from the actual exam brief itself that we do have a limit on the number of bedrooms that a caravan can have and this is a value of between one and three so what we need to do is go down to our validation rule and we're going to type in between one and three and then as we did before with the validation rule for the manufacturer's table we're going to put in a little t a prompt text there for our users to know that they can only enter a value that must be between one and three
We're now going to look at the manufacturer ID data type. Uh, earlier on we put this as number and obviously this is wrong uh, because we know that the ID inside of the manufacturer table is three letters long. But what we can do is we can use uh, what's known as a lookup wizard. And this is where we can get the value from the table uh, using some form of drop down box. So what we want to do is we want to look up the field from another table using the wizard that we're going to get here. And obviously in the manufacturer's table, we want to choose that one to get the ID. So we're going to select that from the navigation option here, and then we're going to choose the manufacturer's name. Now, if you can see here, I've got the single arrows and the double arrows. What that represents is being able to drag over both options or just one option at a time. So let's just drag over the manufacturer name in this instance. I'm going to click on next here. You'll see that it says hide the key column. Now this is the, the primary key column. Notice that, that we can turn that on and off. Now this is an important feature because by leaving this hidden, what we're doing is we're not showing the data for the ID, the actual primary key. But what we are doing is we're showing the value, the actual manufacturer's name. Because it's worth remembering that if we use a three letter acronym, some people might not understand what that actually is. However, what we want to do is still bind the value of the primary key, the manufacturer ID, to the value inside of the models table. So what we do is we allow the user to see the actual manufacturer name, but we actually put the value of the manufacturer ID into the table. So as you can see, we've also got this hashtag name exclamation mark message inside of the manufacturer's name. Don't worry about this. That's just because we don't have any data inside of the table just yet. What we then do is move on to the next part of the wizard where we're just going to click on finish. And this is also going to establish some form of relationship between the two tables. And we must make sure that we save the tables first. So we're just going to make sure that we click on yes for this little message box here. Next, we're going to move on to the sales table. We're just going to make sure that everything is okay in the sales table. and we're going to check that everything is fine inside of the caravans table. Uh, we're just gonna make sure that instead of using the year built as being a date time, we're actually gonna change this to be a value that is number. This is because we just want the year that the caravan was built. Unfortunately, the only formats that we've got inside of date time is short date, and that includes the uh, day and the month, and we just want the year. So we're gonna change this as well. We're now going to look at creating the relationships between the tables. So in order for us to do this, we're going to need to go to the database tools tab where we can select the relationships button. On doing that, we'll be placed into this diagram area here. What we want to do is we want to add the tables to our database design here. So in order for us to show the tables that we can have available to us, we choose the add tables option on the ribbon. Then we want to click on each of the tables that we want to create the relationships between. So we're going to drag in all four of those tables. We can do that via simply double clicking on them or dragging the actual table name into the gray area. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the relationship between the manufacturer's table and the model's table. In order for us to do that, we're going to simply click and drag the primary key from the manufacturer's table and drag our mouse over to the models table where we lay it on top of the manufacturer's ID as a foreign key. This brings up this dialog box where we're going to choose the cascade and delete options and referential integrity options. As you can see, the relationship type says that it says one to many. If you're seeing anything else other than one to many, for example, intermediate, then you may have an issue with your relationship. We're gonna click okay on here, and then we can see that we have our one to many relationship denoted by a one and an infinity symbol on the models table. Now we're gonna drag in the primary key from the caravan table and place this into the models table. We're going to again enforce the referential integrity, deleting and cascading the updates, and then click OK. As you can see, we have our one-to-many relationship established now between these two tables. We're next going to move on to the table for sales and the caravans by dragging over the caravan ID into the sales table, and once again, selecting all three options for the referential integrity choice. And we can see here that we have one caravan can appear many times into our sales table. 
and we're finally going to click on the close option we're going to choose yes to save the relationship and that concludes the relationship creation for our database and now that we have these relationships all of our tables should be able to communicate with each other and pass through information to each table So we're going to look at putting the data into our database tables now and we're going to start off with the manufacturer's table first. What we're going to do is just we're going to put in the prefix of the manufacturer ID so SWA for swallow, LSE for leisure seeker and then finally we're going to put in the BAR for the Bar Barnaby. We can see quite clearly that our input masks for capitalization is working quite nicely here. Then we're going to move on to the next table, which is our models table, and we're going to start to enter the data in here. Now notice I have got a problem here. I've got the number three as an ID on my alter number. That's because I was playing around with the table before, and this can happen. So in order for us to reset that counter, we're going to have to delete the relationships between the caravans and the models table. We're going to then need to go into the design view of the table, and we're going to have to delete the primary key. So once we've deleted the primary key, we're going to add it again, but we're going to add it at the bottom of the table, and then we're going to save. Before we save, we won't set its primary key, and then once we save it again, we will set its primary key, and then we'll save it again, and then we'll re-establish the relationship between the tables. And you can see that it's one to many is back again. So now, notice it's put the value back to one for us. So we're going to go through and we're going to fill in this table now with all of the data out of our data set that we've been given. Now, as you can see, we can see that the table lookup that we created using the data type for lookup table has worked when we get to the manufacturers we just get the drop down for the manufacturer name and then it attaches the id as the value underneath the database hood so we're now going to close this one and we're going to move on to the next one which is going to be our caravans and we're going to go and put in our caravan ids so we're going to put in id number one and we're going to put in the year it was built and the model number that it corresponds to it's worth noting that we could also put some form of lookup table here for the model ID so that we're not having to just remember the number that it is and actually use the drop down option for us in the table lookup. However, we're just going to persevere on here with putting the model number in and make sure that all of the IDs are attached for the caravans and the years that they were built. And then finally, we're going to move on to the sales table. And here we're going to put in the caravan IDs, when they were sold, how much they were advertised to be sold as, and the actual sale price that they got. And this is a very good test to make sure that our composite primary key is working as it should be. Um, as we'll see here that we're going to put caravan ID number one in again, but this time we're going to put a different date. And because that date is different to the previous date, that means that that is a unique identifier and our composite primary key is working properly. So I'm just going to complete the rest of the data set in here. Now I am going to miss out the ID number here and we're going to see if by not putting a, a proper number in, we get a problem. And we do. So I'm just going to go in and put in the number five and we can see that that's worked. I'm also going to check to see if the composite primary key will work. So I'm going to put in the same date and the same caravan ID and see if we get a message pop up from our database. I'm going to put the same value in for the actual advertised press, but the actual price is different. And we can see here that we're getting a message box from the access database to say that we've got a duplicate copy or value inside of our database. So if I just change the data one day further, we can see that the primary key works properly and we're just going to delete that out and that concludes the adding of all of the data inside of our databases we're just going to go and open up the tables and look inside the tables and see that we've got these little plus signs that show the corresponding linked tables to the data that we've got and actually we can see that if we click open the caravan 3 we can see that it's been sold uh, twice inside of our database so we know that it's all working as is expected the next video to come up in the series is going to deal with the queries and the reports and how to create those. 
So please click like and subscribe and click that bell so that you're informed of when the next video is coming out. It should be coming out quite soon, so keep your eyes peeled. And I just want to say thank you very much for your support over the last few years. These videos take a little time to create and I want to make sure that I'm getting the right things out for you. So your support is really appreciated and thanks again.